Herity. Herity loses the possession. It's into Pabwai. It's a goal for Tipperary. More drama in Crook Park as this story changes chapters. Second by second, minute by minute. First it was TJ Reid with a cracker. Then comes this as the Perlis lads came in. Lar Corbett, fair challenge and David Herity comes for his path, Bork, and into the back of the net. Absolutely, Marty, uh, fair attack. I was going to criticise that for being a bit slow onto the breaking ball, and David Herity won't like to see that one again. He should have really had it collected and, you know, put brings tip back into the game again. Now, psychological advantage for the moment is with the Premier County, the Monster Champions. This ball sent in by Brian O'Mara, but the ball is to the right and wide. Half an hour gone, 1-9, 1-7. Most enjoyable. Yeah, Larry Corbett down injured now and looks like a hamstring problem. And the referee is there too as Larry Corbett uh, obviously requires medical attention and fast. Looks like a uh, hamstring injury as uh, the physios and the doctors all arrive. And that was such a significant moment as the ball came in here, came out far as Pa Bark, the Thurless. Sarsfield's combination of 1-2, Corbett did the hitting, Burke did the scoring, all legitimate. Yeah, there was no problem at all with it, and uh, it looks like Lair has... Looks like he's OK again. A minute ago, I thought he was... He's trying to run it off now. If it's a hamstring, he won't run it off, but he looks to be OK now. But he seems to be really focusing on Tommy Walsh, uh, Lair Corbett. He's following him all over the place, and Tommy's on yellow card, and I don't really like to see what Lair Corbett's had out there, to be totally honest with you. No. It's nothing to do with Hurlem, and uh, you know it's not something I've seen out of him before. But he's not concentrating on the game at all. Ball comes over to O'Larkin as we'll keep an eye on Tommy Walsh and Lark Corbett, not just on their screens but indeed off camera as well. Good Kenny, how incensed dissent from Henry Shufflin, who expressed his view, and there's an extra 13 metres for Tipperary. Yeah, look, there wasn't a lot in it again. You know, the tackles that are going in the game, but you know, some some are being let away and some aren't. And uh, you know, a good heavy hit on Brendan Maher, and he was getting up. There was maybe an arm across him, but they're marginal calls. He's already scored a goal and four points. This is Pa Bork. Hits it absolutely beautifully. And there's a man on form. David Heretic with the puck out. Drops it down. And it's Shane McGraw. Blistering pass. Not a great pass, I must say, but it could still work out first. Brian O'Mara. Paul Murphy picked up an injury, but he managed to get the hand pass in. Finlay battling here for Paul Kerr. Down first, Corey Maher. And as he fell to the ground, hits it. An almighty wallop down towards Brian O'Mara. Lara Corbett has gone inside. O'Mara, Noel McGrath hits it quickly on the 45 and registers another point for Tipperary. And the sides are level for the fifth time in 33 minutes of action. Yeah, and Marty, to be fair to Brian O'Mara, he's really you know, opened a, uh, shown great leadership in the Tipperary attack. He won that ball again and laid it off straight away to Noel McGrath. He's had a hand in four or five scores now and he's doing very, very well. Ball breaks for Richie Park. High challenge, it would appear, by Torek Maher. Referee has blown his whistle. One minute of additional time just being announced here. What yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely, I yeah, came in came straight in. You know, we've seen yellow cards given for an offside less than that. I don't know what Declan Ryan was looking for there. And the shenanigans still continues between Lara Corbett and Tommy Walsh. Well, no, they're literally it, it, are following it, each other. Well, it, Tommy isn't following him at all. Lara just Lara keeps doing it. It's like he's trying to pick up Tommy Walsh. He keeps following him and uh, trying to annoy him. Henry Shefflin hits this to the right and wide. It's, it's rather funny to watch, Michael, because it looks like Lara Corbett wants to be wants to mark Tommy Walsh rather well, than the other way around. He wants to get his attention on here, but you know you have to say a great comeback for Tipperary. They were five times down a few minutes ago, and uh, you know if they if they had blinked, they could have been gone out of the championship. And great great comeback by them. Kieran Joyce clearance was not a good one. Comes far as 
Noel McGraw, but that's well wide of the target. Scoreline remains level. And they've been level five Yeah, times. the ref is calling this a 65. He must have saw a little deflection on the ball down there, and um, he's given a 65. We're into injury time, and obviously uh, the umpire now raises his arm to signal the referee's decision to uh, give this 65. And remember, Tipperary playing with wind advantage, so possibly but to drop this in high and hopefully maybe go in leading at the break. Well, that's it, and, you know, as I said, we're five points down, and what a huge, you know, seven or eight minutes by Tipperary coming up to half time, and if they go in a point up now, that's some turnaround, and as I said earlier, you know, Kilkenny would have done most of the hurling and won a lot of the 50-50 battles, but, you know, it's a sign of how good Tipperary are and how dangerous they are. Referee Carl McAllister just telling Michael Finlay to get back the sufficient distance. It's Pa Burke standing over. Here he comes. And there is the point. His free taking has been a model of consistency in the opening half. And it gives Tipperary a one point advantage. With one minute of injury time now played. And the referee, Paul McAllister, blows the half time whistle. Tipperary and Kilkenny head to the dressing room after a most pulsating opening half in this All-Ireland semi-final. A goal by TJ Reid after 27 minutes certainly give Kilkenny an advantage, but Pa Burke responded three minutes later. The sides have been level five times in the first half, but at the break, it's Tipperary leading by one goal and ten points to Kilkenny's 1-9. Analysis coming up right after the break. Thank you very much, Michael. As you mentioned, 50,220 here in Croke Park. And thoroughly enjoying a pulsating contest. What's waiting for them is Galway on the 9th of September in the All Ireland Hurling Final. Marty, that's the best one I've seen. Mar the ref threw in the ball and then tip of only 14 on the field. Eric Harbour hasn't come back out yet, wherever he is. He probably knew that Jackie Turley would be waiting at the tunnel for him. <laughs> but I don't know where he is, but he's not out in the field. And well spotted is right, Michael, and uh, indeed. As we were watching the slither flying out over the sideline, there is still yeah, a player available. And Killian, Killian Buckley is on the field and will remain on the field until Brian Cody decides to take him off, obviously, because Michael Rice's injury. And now Lar Corbett has uh, been welcomed back onto the pitch rather belatedly. And again, we have more of what we saw at the start of the first half with uh, more shouldering and shoving and pushing going on behind the scenes as uh, eventually Tommy Walsh takes up Pat Burke and meanwhile while all that was going on we've got a point for Kilkenny. Henry Sheffield put over a free there and that is bizarre to say the least and I'd like to see Lara copping himself on a bit here and starting to hurl instead of going on with some sort of a side shot that nobody has any interest in it's not to do with hurling. Not exactly delayed Lara Corbett we do not know but he was late arriving back onto the field and, uh, the referee wasn't uh, going away from him. As Colin Finlay swings a ball across over towards Aidan Fogarty, who arrives in spectacular fashion. Great catch, makes room for himself and flings it between the posts. Wonderful score by Aidan Fogarty, who has now scored three times, all of them from play. Well, he has, um, and what an attitude this man has. He's as tough as nails. He won a great ball in the air there and turned. And he's on Thomas Stapleton, who I mentioned before the game, uh, has no experience at this level from the defender point of view, and he scored now three points from play. Here's Noel McGrath having a shot from way out the field. David Herity is there, it seems to hit off the poster, hit off his hurl. Patrick Bonamar trying to get inside the cover, trying to fire the uh, bullet, pull the trigger, didn't quite do so. But Kenny are back there in their numbers, including Paul Murphy, the right corner back in the left corner back position. The ball seems to have gone out over the end line. The umpire has his arm raised momentarily and he's now gone to the exact position the Slither went over the line and he's giving a 65 to Tipperary. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> while we were trying to figure out where Lara was, uh, Kilkenny have got two points and gone into the lead, but great defending there by uh, JJ Delaney. You know, Bonner Maher broke onto the ball. JJ just stood, stood his ground and held him out and showed his experience. And uh, he, there's off, then David Hurley didn't really know where that was. But you see, the, you see the influence of the wind there. Norman McGrath didn't get the distance, and it'll be interesting to see Tarbock now at 65 into the wind. And that's a super strike. Great score. 
He's now got a personal tally of a goal and seven points. And the sides level again for the seventh time in this match. David Herity with the puck up. That slither hitting the post. Didn't hit off his hurl at all. Certainly caused a bit of panic in uh, Killian Buckley. Yeah. Off camera, there's another row developing. That uh, ball is sent in by Buckley that's left and wide. And the referee, I think, will actually have to take control of this and issue a yellow card because well, this is becoming a side well, Martin, shot. What's happening is Lark Harb is following Tommy Walsh around. He's running. Tommy Walsh is on a yellow card since very early in the game. And to me, it looks like Lark Harb is trying to get involved in something with Tommy Walsh. And it's absolutely disgraceful to carry on. Ball has just barely kept it, nicked away by Thomas Stapleton. Working hard is Brian O'Mara, comes back towards Stapleton again, picked up almost by Noel McGrath. This is Killian Buckley. Steps away from the challenge of Patrick Bon O'Mara and hits it long. A little bit of pressure, Owen Larkin underneath it. Ball comes free for his Colin Finney, the referee spotted the infringement and he's given a free in to Kilkenny, which should stretch their lead again. As Paul Curran battling with Owen Larkin here. And eventually the referee spotted the push and he's given the free to the Cats. Yeah. The referee needs to take action on well, this. Well, I, I know who needs to take action, Declan Ryan. You know, and Henry Shefflin takes the point and stretches. Kilkenny's nose just in front by one again. And I think, Marty, the, the physical power of the Kilkenny full forward line in this half could tell, you know, there's a strong wind behind them. You've got Colin Fenley, Owen Larkin and Henry Shefflin in there. And, you know, Tip don't have Michael Cahill and Conor Vine aren't the biggest men in the world. And it'll be interesting to see. I expect Kilkenny to play very, very direct for them. Remember, as Michael mentioned, uh, Tommy Walsh is on a yellow card from the start of the game. JJ Delaney, Paris David Herity. Dropping down towards Aidan Fogarty. Breaking ball picked up by TJ Reid. Running at the temporary defence, being pursued by Pat Burke and Conor Amani. TJ's efforts goes well wide of the target. Quick puck out from Brendan Cummins. Switching play over to the far over side towards John O'Brien. Gets a little bit of space for the first time in this All Ireland semi final. And John O'Brien from Tumivara. Puts his name on the score sheet for the very first time. And once again, the Cats and the Premier County are level. Eight that, times level. That's a great score, Marty. Great puck out by Brendan Cummins and John O'Brien. And what a you know, hard week he's had. And condolences to him and Paddy and all the family. And uh, he's a great man to be here at all today. Paul has swept down towards Michael Fennell. There's a little jersey pull. It's going to be a free for Kilkenny. Just inside their own half of the field. Now Corbett off camera is trying to tell the linesman that the free should be further back. And to the credit of the referee and indeed the linesman that now placed the slitter in the right place. Gone back to take this free inside his own half of the field is Richie Pop. He scored one point in the first half. I think to be fair to Lar, he's right there. I think that free was seven eight yards. I know Jackie Hurl and Lar are again. They're taking scouts off each other, digging each other with the hurls. Richie Power puts this over the bar and the referee has taken the action that's required, I feel, and given a yellow card to Lar Corbett and a yellow card to Jackie Tyrrell. And perhaps now Lar will concentrate on what its primary purpose is, which is to, to play hurling and not to be chasing Tommy Walsh. Puck out comes down towards Brendan Ma. Gets a little touch to it. Good Kenny back in the attack. Great catch once again, this time by Henry Shepherd taking laying it off for his penalty. Oh, that's a brilliant hook by Michael Cowell coming to Tipperary's rescue at precisely the right time. And that is a 65, and there's a more arguments and physicality this time going on between Porig Marr, who seemed to pull on Henry Shefflin a little bit high as we watch this again. Yeah, well, what a catch by Henry Shefflin, first of all. Colin Fenley went inside. Now, the referee allowed the advantage there. A lovely touch into Colin Fenley and a great block down there by my, or a hook by Michael Cahill. And I agree with you, Marty. I think when the ball did go out for the 65, Tariq Maher seemed to uh, pull a little bit of a stroke on Henry Shefflin, but it's a 65 now. Henry met not. Richie Power is actually taking it.
the side show that's attracting the crowd at the off-camera 